say it's kind of ironic that I call me a Nielsen presentation, but I have to say that was excellent. That was very good. And I can now say that I'm no longer with TLS. Right? Um, what I'm going to talk about is the, the entire media uh, industry here in Vietnam. And what I find ironic about the media industry here in Vietnam is the huge shift in terms of consumption of media, but the stagnant uh, development of consumers or of, of, of spam, advertising spam in Vietnam. So without further ado, now I'm here to tell and not to sell. So that's all you're going to hear about in focus. So I want to start uh, talking about the past a little bit to give you an understanding of where we are. All right. Um, what you can see here, this is the media growth in terms of advertising spend in the last sort of uh, 20 years, all right? And what you see very clearly is something very simple. All the growth is TV. Hardly any of it is anything else, all right? Now, if we take a look at what's going on with other media, what you're seeing is print radio, are plummeting and internet is increasing slightly. But the key point is internet is increasing slightly. Okay? You've seen from our colleagues at Civigo about the speed that you can utilize mobile for surveys. You've seen about our colleagues from uh, 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 Samsung about the power of apps. But why are people not spending more money on internet and digital advertising? Now, let's talk about today's landscape. Uh, sorry for this chart, it's pretty ugly, but you know, I, I was told that this is called the good, the bad, and the ugly. I represent the ugly, therefore you get an ugly chart. Um, key point is this, take a look at the second column here in terms of media type as a percentage. 91% of all media spend in Vietnam above the line is TV. Uh, as nowhere else in the world do you see this. Nowhere else in the world do you see this. All right. The figures I have in 2014 are estimates because I only had figures up to 2000. Uh, sorry, November 2014. But it shows roughly about a 20 percent growth, which is still pretty phenomenal. However, what we don't know about that growth is that growth inflationary, or is it actual growth? You, we all know that there's an awful lot of discounting that's going on when it comes to the media. And unfortunately, our good colleagues at Kantar Media can't capture that because we only know what the rate cards are and who buys what. All right? So we have to be fair there. All right? uh, but why is TV still the king? All right? I am 51 years old. I did not use a computer until after university. All right? When we first got internet in Vietnam, uh, 19, uh, December 97, I got internet and I waited for two weeks and nothing happened. And then finally someone said, Ralph, have you pressed send and receive? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know. And unfortunately, it's old dummies like myself that run these companies. We've grown up on TV. We've grown up watching sitcoms and whatever else. We're not uh, as comfortable with digital as a lot of young people are. And that's part of the reason why TV is so powerful. Also, if you take a look at who's spending on advertising, it is mostly FMCG companies. Most FMCG companies are targeting who? Housewives. Are housewives online all the time? No. They're taking care of the baby, they're cooking food, they're selling stuff, they're trying to make their fat husbands happy, all this stuff. So they're watching TV. And that's also why you have this uh, incongruence in spend. And then finally, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but I've been in market research for 20 years, there is no ROI, return on investment, in terms of a digital uh, 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 measurement in Vietnam today. So people are not going to spend more until they find out what's happening with their money. <laughs> now, uh, I thank TLS, Kantar Media, and a few other people for the sources here. Uh, again, so I'm in play. But these are perception, not behavior figures. But what you're seeing here is very simple. This is the internet. 
And you can see people are going to use more. They find it more entertaining, and they're going to use more in the future. Put it TV. Less, less, less. All right? Now, there is still a major difference between urban and rural. Uh, if you look at uh, urban Vietnam, internet, newspaper, and social media, rural Vietnam, TV, mobile, and radio. Now, mobile, we're not talking about smartphones. We're talking about dumb phones, or what we call functional phones. Okay? Uh, so, one of the key things is, whatever you do here in Vietnam, you have to have two strategies. One for urban, one for rural, all right? Because the markets operate very differently today. That will change in half the time. Now, one of the other things that people don't realize is that digital or internet is an incredible medium to fill the gaps. As you can see here, uh, this is TV, this is internet, this is print. And what you see is people consume media differently at different times of the day. Very often you wake up, whatever else, okay, you might use your phone, but a lot of people sit down and read the newspaper at breakfast, okay? You're not actually uh, watching TV. However, kids watch TV in the morning. So what you wind up is, is you wind up with different cycles during the day when media is consumed. The internet is wonderful, because what it does is it bridges the gaps. So you wind up with a, a continuity of consumer connections. Continuity. Wow, that's crazy. Right. Uh, one of the other interesting things about internet which people don't realize is that yes, internet is still very much an entertainment driven device, all right? But in Vietnam, researching a product before you buy it is huge. I think we've all done it, you know? Instead of driving around all over Saigon to find the watch that I want, I go online, I find out what watch I want, how much it costs, who has it, and then I go to that place to buy the watch. So Vietnamese are using uh, the internet as a research tool in terms of uh, providing, uh, 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 how do I say, uh, convenience, all right? And Vietnamese are very smart that way. We all know that Vietnamese will rarely ever pay more than they have to for anything, except for my wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's not here, thank God. All right. Uh, now, how many people heard of Black Friday? Okay. You know, I thought Black Friday was when the stock market crashed in 1929. Me too. Right. Oh, did you also? <laughs> Two of us, all right? So when I heard about this, I did some research. And here's the numbers I found out. So, there was an article that said they expected 8 to 10 million purchases online. And I kind of went, hmm, let's figure out the reality of this. So here's what I found out. I found out that I don't want to use this device. All right. Uh, so you had 8% of the total internet population actually join Black Friday. Okay. You had 550,000 website visits, all right, or 15% of the total that internet population. This was 15% higher than the, or 15 times higher than the average. So it did work. Black Friday did have a positive impact. Okay? 77% access by computer, 19% by mobile. But what's interesting, only 1.6% 1 or 6,000 people made purchases. Equated to $370,000 or $58 per purchase. All right? So, what I don't know is how much do people actually spend on advertising Black Friday? I would imagine it was probably quite a bit. All right? So my simple point is, people are keen, they love using the internet, but do they actually have the money, and is there the trust to buy online? All right? We all know that when it comes to consumption in Vietnam, trying is believing. So you rather go to the store, feel, touch, taste what you're buying so you know what you're getting. <laughs> now, let's talk about the drivers of growth. Uh, youth, age. We all know that Vietnam's a fairly young country. But today, 60% of the population has actually grown up with internet, all right, as a staple within their lives. But of that 60%, only 35% are wealthy enough 
to maximize or utilize what we're doing. Okay? However, if you look at the population statistics, this is 2009, so you just have to add three years over this. By 2021, you're going to have a huge influx of consumers who are old enough and cashed up enough to utilize the internet. So I predict, shameless, fearless, six more years and you're going to see an explosion in this country. Unbelievable. I was talking to someone today who said, when is this going to happen? But she said, it happened in China four or five years ago. Well, let's be honest. China opened up in the early 80s. When did Vietnam open up? Early 90s. So it takes a generation or two to make that happen. Another one, GDP. Now, we just saw this from Nielsen. Their figures are wrong, my figures are right. Uh, the bottom line is we're saying the same thing. Uh, uh, the the, 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 the uh, amount of wealth has basically quadrupled in a short period of time. I think they said 74% in 10 years, and I, I'm saying uh, double that in 20 years. So same, same, same. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, again, and this goes to the point from from uh, Samsung and uh, uh, also from Lynn from uh, uh, Cimigo. If you take a look at internet penetration, 66% urban, 44% rural, all right, and smartphone penetration. Now, I believe smartphone is already 30% over in urban vehicles. So you're just going to see that collide, 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 collide. So in a short period of time, these will be 90%. By the way, you'll never have 100% of anything. Some people just don't want, refuse to. If you ever see research where it says 100% of any penetration, bullshit, it's wrong. Okay. Now, so what are, what's driving? Urban rural penetration, wealth, increased collect, uh, connectivity, and the demographics of the country. These are the drivers. However, what's only a fact? And I think this is more important than the drivers. Almost half of the people on the internet are under the age of 25. How many people under the age of 25 that you know have a lot of money? That's the problem. Half the people don't have money. All right, that's the number one thing that is creating a, a, a slowdown, if you will. Number two, there's no validated measure of what the return on investment is from internet, okay? And the other one is the fragmentation of players and deliverables. Uh, the number of companies who are providing digital services here has gone 10 years ago from four to, Jesus, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. It's unbelievable that there's a new digital company opening up every week. So the whole thing is, there is not enough spend concentrated to create a system because everybody's trying to do their own thing. And this is going to take a while for this to uh, settle. Now, um, I don't know if uh, some of you guys remember Chris Van Sal from JWT. He was here a long time. He was sort of the pop bear of advertising. And he had a great quote, which I want to share with you. And that is, I, I asked him, like, what do you think of the future of digital? What do you think is holding it back? He said, for those who understand the benefits of online advertising, they don't have the power to influence the decision makers. While those who do have the power are too busy trying to figure out how their iPhones work. And it's very true. The guys like me, who are or were in power, we're not the most digitally savvy people on the planet. Okay? Give it another generation where a lot of the young people in this room are in control, you'll see that escalate very quickly. Okay? And uh, second last slide. Now, I think it's also important to understand the future. And the future can be summed up in two points. Number one, this is global market research spend last year. Global market research spend grew by only 1.5%. So, Traditional market research spend actually declined. What's happening is you take a look at the different online analytics, social media communities, web traffic measurement, uh, web and social media research, all going over 10%. So what's happening is the world is switching from traditional to uh, uh, digital. But it takes a while for that to transfer 
into actionability. So this is a trend that I certainly see happening uh, in the VFL. But I think most importantly, uh, here's my analysis. By 2021, you're going to see a genuine explosion of digital. All right? So we've got another six, five years. That also gives us a lot, lot of time to plan and be ready for it. Okay? And, and again, I think streaming, I, I believe you've talked about it. Apps streaming, the, the online, I think the guy from uh, Netflix said, broadcasting will be dead. Advertising is expensive on TV. Imagine what things like Netflix, what online will do. It will totally shake up the industry. Okay? Uh, and the apps as well. We will have an ROI measurement system, so that will be good. All right? And reach and affordability will be 100%. So I'm going to quote a very famous guy, me, uh, and that is new technology, demographic shifts in age and income, as well as reach and cost that traditional media will drive mobile. All right? And I don't know if you're aware, but the advertising law is finally changing next year. Okay? <coughs> and the law today has a cap of 10% of your revenue that you're allowed to spend on advertising. That cap is being lifted on July 1. That's going to have a huge impact. The other one is they are now also finalizing that they will no longer assume uh, advertising as a uh, business expense, but as a tax deductible. If those two things come through, it will have a huge change within the industry. All right? So, uh, that's it for me. Come on, you. Thanks a lot.